Hi, here's a video tutorial uh, that looks at uh, the design of the minimum uh, steel shear reinforcement in a reinforced concrete beam in accordance with uh, the Eurocodes. In a different video, we've looked at the same beam and we've designed the uh, main bending reinforcement and we found that it needed uh, 3H32 to carry a UDL of 91.2 kilonewtons per meter over a span of 7 meters. The support width is 400 mil and the beam itself has an overall depth of 690 mil, a width of 350. Uh, we found out earlier that its effective depth D is 619 millimeters and also Z, the lever arm of the beam, was 535 millimeters. The strength of the concrete is 32 newtons per millimeter squared. Great, that's a good start. What we need to do now is think about uh, the shear reinforcement for this beam. Uh, perhaps you can tell from this section that it's actually a T-beam. I'm considering it as a rectangular beam just for simplicity and for the sake of this uh, tutorial. Right, what is the shear reinforcement? I'm assuming that we're going to use H12, that's 12 mil diameter, high yield bars, and two legs. That means that each of these bars has been bent into a rectangular shape and the bars are arranged along the length of the beam and in some ways you could say that these act as kind of staples or they tie the top part of the beam to the bottom part of the beam because uh, when a reinforced concrete beam is loaded in shear uh, it's going to cause some shear cracking. Let's have a think now about the ways in which uh, it's loaded and the ways in which it may uh, crack and behave. Right. First thing we can do is we can calculate the uh, reaction at each end of the beam and the reaction is simply the um, UDL times the span divided by 2. And the shear force diagram for the beam, uh, it's a greatest at that support, greatest at this support and it's just simply a straight line diagonal down from maximum at the supports down to minimum mid span where the bending moment's maximum. Right. And that suggests that the shear force is a maximum at the supports. Well, it wouldn't be too far wrong if uh, that's the approach you took. But let's look at this a little bit more closely. Here's a bit of a zoom in on the support and here's the UDL acting over the entire effective span of the uh, beam. Now, let's have a think of any load applied to the top of the uh, beam directly above the support. Well, if the support is here, there'll be no shear force arising from that load because any downward force here would simply be resisted by an upward force here. That doesn't cause any shear, it compresses the concrete, but it doesn't shear it. A shearing force is one that acts like this. So the first place that this concrete might, concrete beam might um, develop some actual shear forces would be right at the face of the support. It could possibly crack at that point and this part of the beam move downwards. Right. How do we calculate the shear force at that point? Well, we could take the reaction and we could reduce the reaction by this amount of the uniformly distributed load acting on the beam because that little bit of load is not causing any shearing. That's acting directly above the support and it's not contributing to the shearing. Okay, that's easy enough. But what if the beam doesn't crack purely vertically? I don't think concrete beams do tend to crack like that. Perhaps if it was made of some very soft material, like blancmange, it might crack like this. Not that blancmange would crack. How about, um, it's much more likely to crack at an angle. So what if it was to crack at an angle like this? Well, if it were to do that, which is quite a reasonable assumption, because concrete can act in compression, the steel embedded within the concrete that can act in tension, and you can have a kind of strutting action within the concrete that acts very well in compression, so that a force acting down on the concrete here part of the UDL can be transferred into the uh, 
into the support like this and any force here again may be transferred into the support through the concrete strutting or acting in compression in combination with the steel so any forces acting along the top here if the shear crack finally forms here are not going to contribute to the shear forces in the concrete uh, causing this crack only those forces beyond the crack which are forcing the beam down are going to uh, do that and those forces are going to be the entire UDL creating the reaction reduced by this amount of load uh, which tends to uh, be supported directly by the support okay that's good so really uh, now we need to have a little think about the, uh, the shear reinforcement and how it stops the section from cracking if we're considering a crack that may run across the beam in this sort of position then the steel reinforcement at these positions are going to tend to hold the whole beam together and they are the shear reinforcement that would uh, that would strengthen the beam's shear resistance so if I draw a section through the beam if I cut the beam and look upwards I'm cutting the beam and looking upwards I would be able to see the cross-sectional area of all of that steel so the strength of the steel is directly related to the area of the steel here okay that's good let's have a let's actually get on with some calcs so the first thing that I want to do is I want to work out the reaction so the reaction for this beam 7 meters long 91.2 kilonewtons meter UDL the reaction 91.2 times 7 divided by 2 319 kilonewtons that's it the next thing I want to do is to consider just what VED min is well VED min is the shear force at a certain distance where I think a long crack may develop well the Euro code says um, yeah you can take a fairly shallow angle and but that distance here from the face of the support to the end of the crack you must not consider it as being more than 2.5 Z great so all I want to do now is I want to measure the length of this UDL well it's the width of the support divided by 2 0.4 divided by 2 plus 2.5 Z 2.5 times 0.535 these units are meters because I'm multiplying it by the UDL which is 91.2 kilonewtons a meter that gives me this load here which I re remove from the reaction to get VED min that's the shear force at this point 179 kilonewtons now what I want to do is I want to work out uh, what's the shear capacity of the beam well the Euro code says you must always include a certain minimum amount of shear reinforcement in the beam and uh, that's, a, that's a good idea because without shear reinforcement without these steel bars uh, the beam can suffer a dramatic um, almost explosive um, failure which is dangerous so um, so we always include a minimum amount of uh, steel links perhaps excluding very small reinforced concrete lintels that you may get above doorways that kind of thing okay any beam needs a minimum amount of steel well if as long as we provide the minimum amount of steel the euro code gives us this equation which is the shear capacity of the beam with the minimum amount of steel reinforcement in shear and it's 0.15 db fck well do we know what uh, 0.15 d 617 b 350 fck 32 that gives us an answer in newtons I don't want that, I want it in kilonewtons, so I divide it by a thousand. So the capacity of the beam is, a, or the resistance of the beam is 183 kilonewtons. Well, that's more than the applied design shear force. Great, that means that I can get by with minimum links. I've just got to work out what the minimum links are now. Well, I know that I'm going to use two legs of 12mm diameter links. 
Here they are, two legs, 12 mil diameter links. And if I use my section area tables, two legs, 12 mil diameter links, that gives me a cross sectional area of a of a, uh, a link has been 226 mil. So the area of this plus that is 226 mil. The area of that plus that, 226 mil. Very good. I can plug that into the equation now, which I have from the Euro code, which tells me that the spacing between the links must be no greater than the area of the links times the strength of the links, the characteristic strength of the links, 0.08 B F C K. Okay, so 226, that's cross sectional area of a single link, times 500, that's the strength of the links, 500 newtons per millimeter squared, 0.08, 350, that's the width of the beam, and square root of 32, that's FCK, the strength of the concrete. That tells me it's 713 mil. So theoretically, I could space my links 713 mil apart. I don't want to do that though. I want to use something a bit more sensible than that. So I, I always stick with a rule of thumb that restricts my spacing to 0.75 D, three quarters of the effective depth. And in this case, 0.75 D is 462 mil. So I'm going to specify for this beam two legs of H12 bars at 450 centers. So I always keep my centers slightly less than whatever I calculate. So two legs of H12 bars at 450 centers, and that's uh, the minimum steel uh, for this beam, and it's sufficient for the shear forces developing in it. Great, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm also going to uh, produce a tutorial for the shear reinforcement in a beam. Uh, assuming that minimum links are not sufficient and um, that's a, a much more complicated uh, approach but we'll, we'll see how we get on with that. Great, thanks for watching again. Cheerio.